We're now going to have a look at another reaction that um, alkenes undergo. So far we've looked at four reactions which were hydrogenation, hydration, um, halogenation and reaction with hydrogen halides. So the fifth reaction that alkenes can undergo is addition polymerization. Um, so we've seen that all alkenes undergo addition reactions. So this is just another example of um, an addition reaction that alkenes can undergo. So first things first, we need to know a couple of definitions. So the first one we need to know is what a polymer is. So a polymer is a long chain molecule and it's formed from many repeat units of monomers. So polymers are made up of lots of monomers. And a monomer is a small molecule that combines with many other monomers to form a polymer. Okay, you should have come across those keywords before, um, it is just worth recapping. And when it comes to addition polymerization, it is the formation process of polymers by repeated addition reactions of many alkene molecules. So this type of polymerization is one that only alkenes can undergo. Um, it is worth knowing that there are that there is another type of polymerization that we look at in module six. Um, so we're not going to look at that until next year, and that is condensation polymerization. Okay, but when it comes to addition polymerization, that's the one to do with alkenes. Only alkenes can undergo addition polymerization. So let's now have a look at um, the kind of general reaction of addition polymerization. Um, key thing is, is that we're going to end up with one product, we're going to end up with one monomer. Okay, that's what makes it an addition reaction. Um, we're going to use a generic alkene, so an alkene is one that just has a double bond in it. So in terms of what's bonded to um, the carbons, it doesn't actually matter. So I'm just going to use generic uh, W, X, Y and Z as the group. So they can be absolutely anything. Okay. And what we can do is we have lots of these monomers. Okay, so this here is the monomer. If we have a lot of them, we can say, obviously to balance this and do this mathematically, we have n lots of this monomer. Okay, and for polymerization to occur, we need to have high temperature and high pressure. So in terms of reaction conditions, this is what we usually need. Uh, but the specific temperature and pressure uh, would depend on the monomer that we're using. Okay. And in terms of what it forms, so if you think of it, if we have lots of these, they're just going to bond to each other. So the double bond is going to break and this is going to bond to other units, um, other monomers. So in terms of drawing the polymer, we're not going to be expected to draw out the whole polymer. Uh, the simplest way that we can draw it is by drawing a repeat unit. Um, so the way to draw one repeat unit from the monomer is you draw the two carbons in, but you break the double bond between it. Okay, so you just have a single bond. You then put all of the groups in as they were before. Yep. Z. Um, and as we know, carbon must form four bonds. So these extending bonds here are the ones that are bonding to other repeat units or other monomers. Okay, so we have these coming out as extending bonds and we put square brackets around the monomer like so. And because we had n lots of this, we also have n lots of this. So we put n um, at the bottom right hand corner of the repeat unit. OK, so whenever you're drawing the repeat unit of a polymer, double check. Does your carbon have do your carbons have four bonds? You should have these extending bonds coming out here um, ideally square brackets and the n to balance the equation because this equation is now balanced. OK, so this over here is our monomer. Your monomer should have the double bond present. Okay, and over here we have our polymer. So our polymer, uh, we have a section of our polymer. This that I've drawn over here is a repeat unit of the polymer. This is one repeat unit that I've drawn. Uh, you could be asked to draw three repeat units, which in case uh, you would draw three lots of these side by side, um, obviously bonded together with the square bracket around the whole thing. OK, so this over here is the repeat unit. Your repeat unit should not have um, any double bonds in it, so it should be completely saturated. Your polymer should be saturated um, unless there was a double bond um, in W, X, Y or Z, 
um, then obviously that would stay. Um, in terms of the kind of molecular mass of this, the polymer will tend to have a high molecular mass. So they tend to have high, high MRs because you've got lots of these monomers joined together. Um, a polymer is usually, you know, thousands of these monomers joined together. Um, so the whole thing will have quite a high molecular mass because there's so many atoms involved in it. OK, right. So let's do some examples of actual polymers because it is worth knowing these. The simplest one that we can have is polyethene. OK, so polyethene is the one that we're going to look at now. And the kind of brand name for polyethene has become polythene. So you may have heard of it called polythene. OK, this is the material that we use for, um, for example, plastic bags. OK, so polyethene is made from lots of ethene molecules bonded together. So the poly part just means it's lots of the um, ethene monomers joined together. Okay, and that's how uh, polymers tend to be named. They use the name of the monomer and put a poly in front of it. So ethene, as we know, is the simplest alkene. Okay, if I want to write the balanced equation for this, um, it'll be N lots of our ethene molecule under high pressure and temperature. This will form polyethene. OK, so again, I'm now drawing one repeat unit of our um, polyethene. And in order to balance it, I put an N down here. OK, so that is the repeat unit for polyethene, also known as polythene. If a question asks you to draw more than one repeat unit, so let's say the question said to draw three repeat units of polyethene. OK, I'll do that down here. Um, what you would do is start off by drawing one repeat unit. So we know that that here is one repeat unit and you're just going to join three of them together. OK, so that's another repeat unit. And this is another repeat unit. And again, you need the extending bonds at either side. You should ideally put square brackets around that. So this over here is three repeat units of our polyethene molecule. OK, and as you can see, um, all addition polymers, if you were to draw the whole thing out, they will have this carbon backbone. So they have carbon atoms going all the way through this, what I call the backbone of the molecule. OK, and that's a kind of um, trait that all addition polymers have. And it'll be useful to remember that for when it comes on to looking at condensation polymers. Right, let's have a look at another one. So this one is called polyvinyl chloride. Which you might know as PVC. So polyvinyl chloride is also known as PVC. And the monomer that makes PVC, so PVC is used for stuff like um, window frames, door frames um, in industry. So the monomer that makes um, PVC is this. OK, um, you might know, you might, you know, if you, if you name this um, according to the correct nomenclature, it's called um, chloroethene. Um, but one of the old names for it was vinyl chloride. So that's why this polymer, when it forms a polymer, it's called polyvinyl chloride. So if I were to draw one repeat unit of PVC, it would look like this. And again, to balance it, n lots of that with n lots of this. OK. And let's now have a look at another one. So you may have heard of polystyrene. So polystyrene is uh, what we tend to use in packaging or you can get polystyrene cups or polystyrene um, food containers. OK, so polystyrene, um, the monomer for this looks like 
with this. So I know we've never really seen this before, uh, but that is a benzene ring. Um, don't worry why this is called styrene, but this kind of molecule here is called styrene. And then if we draw a repeat unit of this, of polystyrene, it looks like this. Okay, so very, very similar in terms of how to draw out the reactions for it. Um, just remember to balance the equation as well using ends. Right, another one is polypropene. So polypropene, we all know what propene is now. So this could be a material that's used in stuff like um, children's toys, straws and stuff like that. So polypropene is where we have a methyl group coming off here. So we've got three carbons, one, two, three um, in the longest carbon chain. That's why it's called propene. OK, and again, if I were to draw a repeat unit of polypropene. It will look like that. Sorry, that's coming off the board. It will look like that. OK, and the last one that we're going to look at is called polytetra fluoroethane. OK, so long name, so polytetra fluoroethane. And this is obviously shortened down to PTFE. OK, and um, this is what's also known as Teflon. OK, so the monomer for this, it's tetrafluoro. So tetra means four. So it has four fluorine atoms in this ethene molecule. And a repeat unit of polytetrafluoroethene will look like this.